Hello and welcome to this video on international trade and specialization. This is part of our theme for work on globalization and in this video we're going to look at what is meant by imports and exports, what is meant by specialization and have an awareness of how economies and businesses have used specialization to gain a competitive advantage. So one of the features of a globalized world is increasing amounts of trade between different countries. And one of the reasons countries can do this is because of improvements in transportation, as well as changes to the politics of various countries around the world, and a number of different reasons that we'll look at later in the course. This chart here shows us the increase of GDP around the world and the increase in the value of trade around the world. And both are presented as an index with the base year of 1980. And what we can see is that by 2016, while global output has gone up nearly three and a half times from what it was in 1980, the amount of stuff being traded around the world has gone up by nearly seven and a half times. So there's been a real rapid increase in trade around the world, which has outstripped actually the increase in output around the world. So what do we mean by trade? Well, trade is the exchange of products or goods and services. One thing to remember is that trade doesn't necessarily take place between countries. Obviously, it involves products moving between countries, but it's always done by somebody. So it's always done by an economic agent of the country. So it might be a business in South America selling a product to a consumer in Europe. So it's always taken by the decisions of consumers um, and businesses and sometimes even governments. And when conditions are right, it's been shown that international trade brings many benefits. So it can be uh, a benefit in terms of income and GDP growth. And it can bring a benefits in terms of more employment and also raising living standards. So two key terms we need to understand what an export is and what an import is. Let's start with an export. Exports are where goods and services produced by one country are sold to another country. So it's always worth in mind that an export involves products or goods and services leaving the country, but money entering the country. So exports are products and services going out and money coming in. On the flip side, imports are where goods or services are brought into one country from another. So here, importing involves goods or services coming into the country and money leaving the country. So the opposite of exports. So let's have a look at UK exports. Where do the majority of goods and services produced in the UK and then sold abroad, where do they go to? Well, here are some figures that show us where or what share um, different markets take up in terms of the UK's exports. So we can see they're mainly to uh, developed economies and often to economies that are fairly nearby um, within Europe. In terms of imports, where do we import? Where does the UK import? What is the, the source destination for most of the goods and services entering the economy? Well, again, um, some similar countries who we enjoy large amounts of trade with, but you can see uh, one major emerging economy there, which is a significant source of imports as well. So what factors will affect the level of trade between economies? Well, the exchange rates will have an important impact and to be worth remembering SPICED as an acronym that we can use to understand the impact of exchange rates on imports and exports. The price elasticity of demand will have an impact um, if products are priced inelastic. So for example, necessities, then um, the level of trade is likely to be fairly stable. Whereas whether they're price elastic, then movements in the exchange rate, movement in the prices of those products will cause significant um, swings in the volume of trade. Thirdly, the state of the world economy. So for example, um, if a, a country that imports a lot from uh, the UK was to suffer a recession, 
then this should have a significant impact on the level of exports from the UK to that country. Lastly, the quality of the products um, will affect the demand for those products and then any changes in taste and fashion going around the world in terms of different countries will affect the level of trade. Okay, so we looked at imports and exports. Now let's look at specialization. A specialization occurs when individuals, businesses, regions, or even countries concentrate on producing a specific good or service. And this started to occur in the global economy after the 1700s when an economist called Adam Smith did a famous uh, explanation using a pin factory saying that everyone focused on one particular task within the pin manufacturing process, then, then the production process would be much more efficient. And this concept is called the division of labor. So specialization involves the division of labor where workers within an organization focus on one specific task uh, and become very efficient and productive at doing that task. And so overall levels of production and quality improve. So as workforce have a better understanding of their job role, it's likely to lead to an increase in productivity and increase in um, output per worker. Why would countries, individuals, businesses specialize? Well, it can help provide a competitive advantage for that economy or business because it can improve the quality of their products or if they're efficient, maybe enable them to produce at the lowest cost. And these would be some examples in Zambia and Chile of copper mining and specialization in Bangladesh, specialized in textiles, in Vietnam, light manufacturing, Angola, crude oil and the Ivory Coast cocoa. Some more examples might be uh, the specialization within the city of London in banking services. And so maybe the quality um, or the expertise that these uh, workers have enables them to specialize and gain a competitive advantage over other economies or over other um, financial cities. In Korea, an example might be a specialization in electronics. Um, so again, the kind of education system and the environment within that economy enables these countries to specialize, become the best quality at the lowest cost production, and so gain a competitive advantage. As mentioned previously, perhaps in Bangladesh, you might look at a specialization in the textile industry. So businesses based there can gain an advantage through specialization in these particular sets of skills and then become the lowest cost producer. So in this video, we've looked at what is meant by imports and exports, specialization, and looked or developed an awareness of how economies and businesses can use specialization to gain a competitive advantage. That's it. Thanks for listening.